I've had my dreads since the uh, spring of 2017. It was just a wake up moment where one day I said, I don't want to cut my hair anymore. I want to keep it as long as possible and I kind of want to use it as a way of almost documenting my own progress. For a while, I was like doing a lot of protective styles, like braids um, type of styles, and getting locks was a way where I could still have a protective style for my hair, but also embracing my natural hair as well. That forming process has always been something that's really near and dear to my heart. I got it when I went through kind of my coming of age, you know, period of my life, and now that I'm you know, learning how to sit with it. It's become kind of a mark of pride for myself. And just every day I look in the mirror and I see how long they've gotten. And it's just something like I've made progress. I know I've just traveled through time and I've done something at least somewhat good for myself because at least they're staying together. You know what I'm saying? For me, I think I wanted to go into it from like a spiritual aspect. I've seen a lot of people have this sort of spiritual journey through their lock journey. And I kind of wanted to tap into that. I feel like I'm at a point in my life where I do need change and I really wanted to learn more about spirituality. Your hair holds a lot of trauma and a lot of your experiences and so I felt like the way to sort of start over and have this sort of like reawakening of myself and to start this spiritual journey was to start with my hair. The forming process, interestingly enough, was very communal. I had maybe like four or five dudes out there uh, just working on my hair and I got them crocheted. And so seven hours at least sitting in that chair, people poking and prodding my hair, pulling it up from the roots. You can feel the scalp getting tight. People are pricking their fingers. There's blood in my scalp. I mean, it was a really laborious process, but uh, I think it was really worth it because those knots that they left been staying on my head for you know upwards of six, seven years now. I do my own dreadlocks to like maintain them. In terms of the frequency of how often I get a retwist or how often I get it done, it's really a, another thing where it's a kind of response to how it's looking at the moment. If I'm gonna redo my roots and not just like touch up the middle, I, I'll do that probably once every month, once every two months, uh, just depending on how it's all holding together. Sometimes you do it better some days, sometimes you do it worse others. I don't twist my locks myself, but I definitely need to learn. I go and get a retwist. I try, I, right now I'm doing every month. It is a little steep sometimes, but it's like it's worth it. It looks great after and I, I really, I love it. It takes multiple days for me to make it all the way through my head. On any given day, probably four to five hours. Just up there, I'll watch TV or I'll be walking around, maybe I'll just like order something to eat, take a little break, but I'm up there with my hands above my head just going for four to five hours, maybe three days. So if I'm doing it myself and I'm really trying to get it nice and tight, it could take up to 15 hours. There's a huge connection between self-expression and locks. Figuring out how I want to represent myself to society has a lot to do with my locks. Black women are already like paralleled with masculinity and are always compared to just being very manly. Locks have been sort of seen as more of a like masculine style, especially when you have shorter hair. So when you're in that like starter locks phase, it's like really hard to sort of express outwardly your femininity and finding uh, self-confidence and self-love through like going through this like masculinity, femininity sort of war is how I'm going to learn to like love myself and in turn express that self-love uh, outwardly. When I first got him in, very plain, but then when I got into high school, I started getting into certain subcultures, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got a little bit of that uh, punk under my belt and I was like, you know, I started dyeing the tips of my dreads. Uh, I did them bleach white and then I cut that and then I bleached them, did it red, then I did it purple. So these really like bleached ends are just remnants of a time period that's long since passed for me, but it's a way I kind of remember it, you know. The charms I got put in, uh, you know, it's interesting. There was actually a pretty big debate between me and my mom when I was putting them in, because I don't know if you can tell, some skulls in there, you know. And I got uh, some runes in here that are, uh, 
I think the Nordic runes, like some of them were from protection because my uh, grandma actually is Norwegian. You know, my family tree is all mixed up. So it really is like I'm carrying all parts of my family in my hair, you know, not just the stuff from Africa, not just the stuff from the motherland, not just the stuff from America, but also, you know, a few things from all over the world. You know, I feel like these are really kind of uh, signifiers of the melting pot that I am as a person. Getting locks was definitely a way to sort of strengthen my connection to black culture, I feel like. Growing up in Texas, like I grew up in predominantly white areas, so I feel like a lot of the times when I had hairstyles, they were to sort of conform to like the whiteness around me, so I would straighten my hair and perm my hair and everything and sort of like damage my natural hair just to sort of like fit in. Discrimination is something you have to deal with no matter what your hair looks like as a black man. There have been times where I've been in schools, public schools even, where they told me that they wanted me to cut my hair. I just remember there were so many moments in my life where my hair has been a target for people who would have targeted me anyways. I mean, it's not like, oh, the dreads are the one thing they're looking at. I mean, they're looking at the union between what these are and who I am. You know, it's really a thing about color. I don't know if it's really a thing about hairstyle, but it's a way of being proud of it that I think a lot of people are resistant to. Wearing locks are just, it's so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. And I feel like it's such a huge expression of blackness. And so now I'm like still trying to figure out who I want to be, but I feel like it has brought me closer uh, to black culture in a sense. You know, if you've ever been contemplating getting locks, if you feel like you're ready for it and you're ready to dive into that journey, definitely do it. I am very proud of myself for getting into this journey and it definitely has its ups and downs. I've definitely had moments where I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just take them out or I'll start over or I'll go back to what I used to do. But I feel like if you're looking for that change, if you're looking for that, that spiritual journey or anything like that, definitely like take that leap. It's really hard to tell people how much this plays into your personal confidence. It's one of those things, you know, everybody talks about like the wins they have in their day to day. You like get up, you know, take a shower, you know, eat something. It's all the small wins that you tally up to tell yourself you had a good day. I know this is always a plus one for me. You know, no matter what time it is, no matter what day it is, if these are still on my head, I still know that it's unbreaking, unbroken chain is seven years. They've gone through all of it with me. This is consistent and this will always be here.